1932, a five-year-old kid from South Central Pennsylvania is riding with his dad down Bonnie Brook Road in Carlisle on opening day of trout season. They pull into La Torte Spring Run just to check out the action. The fishermen there are elbow to elbow, just tossing their worms out there, and nobody's catching a thing. Except for one guy over in a corner. He's streamer fishing with a fly rod. He gets a half a dozen fish as this kid watches. And that planted the seed in his head. He said, I want to do that. And a couple of years later, he's finally talked his uncle into buying him a fly rod, and his dad takes him trout fishing. And in 1934, seven-year-old Ed Shank catches his first trout with a fly rod. It was on the Latorte Spring Run in South Central Pennsylvania, a creek that he would fish for the next 80 years. Now, he did a lot of other things in those 80 years. He graduated from Carlisle High School, went off and graduated from Penn State in 1951, was in the Air Force for a little while. But throughout all of that, he was always a fly fisherman. And some of his fishing buddies were Harry Murray and Joe Humphreys. Can you imagine that? That's some pretty elite company. Now, he did write one book in 1989 called Fly Rod Trouting, and he published over 50 articles in various fishing magazines over the years. Now, Ed Shank passed away in 2020 at 93 years old, but he really did leave us a legacy, in particular in several of his fly patterns that we still tie and fish today. You might have heard of Shank's Crest Bug, or some of his sculpin patterns, or the Latorte Cricket, or the one I'm going to tie for you today, the Latorte Hopper, sometimes called the Flatwing Latorte Hopper. And it's a really simple pattern, just three materials. You got some kind of yellow fur dubbing for a body, got mottled turkey slip for a wing, and then some deer hair for an overwing and a head. But this really is a classic fly. Mike Valla has a chapter on Ed Shank and his founding flies where he features some of these, and you'll see the Latorte Cricket and Latorte Hopper in all kinds of books out there. And it really is a fun one to tie. I hope you like it. So there's one in the vise, a Latorte Hopper. Now this is a size 10. Recipe in this book says anywhere from an 8 to a 16. So makes you wonder, is this really a truly a hopper? I mean, I haven't seen a lot of grasshoppers as small as a 16. Now I am using yellow thread and I've stepped it up to a 140 denier. And that's because we're sort of spinning deer hair for the head. Not really spinning it, but kind of. And you'll see what I'm talking about here in just a minute. So let's put a little wax on our thread and then take some yellow dubbing. Fur dubbing, you can use a rabbit, you could use a synthetic. This is actually a wool. So whatever you have in a semi-bright yellow, I think this pattern looks the best in a yellow and that's usually how you see it tied. So two or three inch noodle, we're just gonna take this up to, oh, where we're gonna catch in our wing. I think that'll do just fine. It's a little bit fuzzy, but we can trim that if we want. And for the wing, mottled turkey feather, a slip of it. Now I have seen people that take two slips and just tie them in. I'm not gonna do that. I'm going to just get one slip about twice the width of, of each wing and then fold it over tent style like that right there. And I'll put a couple of loose wraps, check the position. See, do I like that? We're gonna trim it here in just a second. I think that's perfectly fine. We'll put a couple of locking wraps. Now trim it to size. And on the back, I want it just a little bit longer than the bend of the hook. And I want to cut it at an angle going forward, just like that right there. And these will probably end up splitting anyway, so you'll end up having, you know, two slips of a wing. So let's go ahead and smooth this out, make some room for catching in our deer hair. And the deer hair I'm using is actually called spinning deer hair. It's, you know, from a part of the body that just a little more hollow and will spin a little bit easier. So I took a fair sized chunk and I'm putting it in my stacker. And I'll open it up with the tips going back. Okay, I think that stacked well enough. And just measure the length, maybe, maybe to the hook bend, maybe just a little bit shy of that turkey tail. And what I'll do here, a pinch wrap, but not tight. And the second one, maybe a little bit tighter, but I'm not letting go of this, the wing part with the, you know, my material hand. And so I'm gonna get a good three or four tight wraps right there. 
and then just work it through the front right here to kind of lock this up and help flare some of this out. So my goal was to keep that wing on the back on top of the hook and anything in the front, yeah, I don't care if that spins around. So we're gonna just pull all this back right here and then put a few wraps right up under here just to lock it. Just watch your eye. You don't want to start closing your eye right there. But we should have some room for a whip finish. And now probably what takes the longest with this fly is trimming all this deer hair. So what I've been doing, I'm just pulling everything off the bottom and then cutting this really short. You don't want to close up your hook gap here. So cut this pretty short right here. And now we'll work our way all the way around, just trimming everything except the, the hairs going back for this wing right here. So trim that head as short as you want it or leave it as long as you want it. It's really just to give it a little bit of profile and maybe help it float a little bit. But there you go. You can see those turkey slips. They've already broken up on me, but that's fine. It would happen after a couple of fish anyway. So that's it. Latort hopper, really simple pattern. Pretty fun to tie. So I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care and we'll see you next time.